This is your WAUK Daily News Roundup for The Shaw, 101.1 FM and 540 AM in Waukesha. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. We start with Wisconsin's reaction to President Biden's announcement he's leaving the race. Here's Savannah Tomei Olson. Going into the weekend, the number of Democratic leaders calling for Biden to resign just kept growing. One of the voices to join that chorus, Representative Mark Pocan from Wisconsin's 2nd District. I didn't want to put out a state. I had a private conversation with the president when he was in Madison, but I didn't tend to say anything. All in all, more than 30 Democratic legislators ended up publicly pressuring Biden to step down. Savannah Tomei Olson reporting. Senator Tammy Baldwin made her first statement about the situation since speculation about Biden's future began. He also promised to be a bridge to the next generation. And we're seeing that transpire in real time before our very eyes. Baldwin at a campaign rally yesterday in Stoughton. More reactions. Governor Evers says President Biden is a leader who's already chosen unity over division. Wisconsin Republican Party Chairman Brian Schimming says Democrats are subjecting the American people to chaos and uncertainty. Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler says President Biden will be remembered by history as one of our nation's greatest presidents. Republican U.S. Senate candidate Eric Hovde says for years Democrats have hidden the truth behind Joe Biden's condition. They were more focused on holding on to power than solving the problems our nation faces. Vice President Kamala Harris campaigns in Wisconsin tomorrow. It'll be one of her first public appearances since rising to the top of the Democratic Party ticket yesterday. Harris's office isn't saying that the latest developments mean changes for tomorrow's visit to Milwaukee. A campaign aide tells the Journal Sentinel there are no changes planned yet. June was rainy enough to get nearly all of Wisconsin out of the drought. The Wisconsin Climatology Office reports most places got at least six inches of rain, which is well above normal. While the drought may be over, there's been a lot of flooding and storm damage throughout Wisconsin this summer. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WAUK News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. It was a visit from the vice president. Now a presidential candidate is coming to Milwaukee tomorrow. Vice President Kamala Harris is scheduled to campaign in Milwaukee tomorrow with a change in status following President Biden's announcement that he will not seek re-election. As of now, Harris's office says there's not been any changes to the visit. Where she will be going is still unknown at this point. Recent polls had been showing former President Trump gaining a lead over Biden in Wisconsin. Ten people were shot and one is dead following an early morning shooting in Milwaukee. The incident at Deneen Park claimed the life of a 17-year-old girl and injured nine others during what police call an impromptu car party. 911 was called at just after midnight with initial reports saying a verbal fight preceded the gunfire. Investigators are working to identify the suspects. Some folks are wondering why it's a full pullout from downtown Waukesha. Waukesha County Technical College and the YMCA of Greater Waukesha County have announced plans to build a new full-service Y facility on the WCTC Pewaukee campus. It will result in the closure of the downtown Waukesha YMCA once the new facility opens. A man has died after being pulled from Lake Michigan near South Shore Park in Milwaukee. It happened early last night when two kayakers fell into the water. Only one came back up before searching began. Downtown Milwaukee is back to the way it was. Crews completed the final removal of the RNC perimeter over the weekend. People living and working downtown have resumed their regular routines as parking restrictions implemented for the convention expired yesterday. Visit Milwaukee officials say it'll take several months to determine the crowd size and the economic impact of the convention on the city. Attention is turning up and to the north this week. Lisa Hale has more. EAA is more than just air shows and experimental aircraft, shopping and camping. It's also a recruitment forum, says Dick Nipinski, Director of Communications. There's still a need for pilots out there, air traffic controllers. There's a big need for that. There is opportunity for technicians. If, If you've got an engineering bend or like to take things apart and put them back together, there is a spot for you. Nipinski says almost every university that has an aviation program will also be recruiting students during EAA Air Venture 2024. And that's what you need to know. I'm Stuart J. Waddles, WAUK News. 
the Brewers sweep the Twins. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers winning both games in Minnesota over the weekend, 8-4 to four Saturday night, and a game that went 12 innings. Yesterday, they went back and forth with the Twins. Reese Hoskins at the plate, top of the eighth, tied at five apiece. The call on Roku TV. Hoskins to left. Austin Martin back. He's at the wall. He'll jump up, and Martin can't make the play, and that is gone a home run for Reese Hoskins. And Milwaukee regains the advantage here late at Target Field. The Brewers went on to win 8-7. to seven. Manager Pat Murphy. This was a relentless victory, you know, relentless on the road. Great crowd, great atmosphere, and a really good team across the way. Tonight, the crew opens a three-game series at Wrigley against the Cubs. NFL, the Packers' first training camp practice is today, followed by the annual shareholders meeting. Defensive lineman Kenny Clark signing a three-year extension worth $64 million. He'll earn $29 million this season. The team's still working on a deal for Jordan Love. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. If you're looking for shows to catch up on, here are some very bingeable episodics that all just received Emmy nominations. In the outstanding drama category are The Crown, Fallout, The Gilded Age, The Morning Show, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Shogun, Slow Horses, and Three Body Problem. In the best comedy category, there weren't many surprises. Nominees are Abbott Elementary, The Bear, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Hacks, Only Murders in the Building, Palm Royale, Reservation Dogs, and What We Do in the Shadows. Actors nominated in various categories include Martin Short, Bill Hader, Jeremy Allen White, and Bob Odenkirk. The Best Actress category includes Christina Applegate, Natasha Leone, Riley Keough, and Jenna Ortega. And in the Outstanding Talk Series category, the nominees are The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, The Daily Show, Late Night with Seth Meyers, and Jimmy Kimmel Live. They're all winners. The legendary Bob Newhart passed away last Thursday at his home in Los Angeles. His final acting role was Professor Proton, which he played on The Big Bang Theory and on Young Sheldon, and the cast remembered him fondly. Kaylee Cuco called it a dream to work with Newhart and to witness his genius, calling Newhart classy, kind, and generous. Mayim Bialik says she grew up watching Bob Newhart, and working with him was a dream come true. It's one thing to not wear deodorant, and another thing to admit to the world that you don't. Such is the case with Kate Hudson, who says she goes au naturel, just like her pal Matthew McConaughey. This is really convenient on a movie set when you're not really sure which one of you stinks, and you can blame each other when the crew starts keeling over from the stench. For what it's worth, giving up deodorant is the perfect way to lose a guy in 10 days. If there is a major corporation against birth control, it is probably Netflix. The company continues to add potential viewers by the millions, having just added another 8 million viewers in the most recent earnings quarter. Yahoo News reports the streamer now has 277 million plus subscribers. Netflix reported revenue of $9.56 billion last year, which is way up from the previous year. Even though you're adding subscribers by the millions, don't let that stop you from jacking up the rates. Sometimes there's a reunion of people that is much anticipated, and then there's a reunion like the one between Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, who are teaming up for another future forgettable reality show. The duo combined their talents to shop on camera on The Simple Life over 20 years ago, which was successful until the Kardashians hit the scene. Hilton and Richie's new show will be a reboot of the original, where every week they received a script that read, try to look sexy, judge others, and contribute nothing to society. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on The Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy today. We'll get to around 78 for a high this afternoon with wind out of the east at only around 5 to 10. Tonight, partly cloudy, 65 tomorrow. Partly cloudy becoming mostly cloudy with afternoon and nighttime thunderstorms are high tomorrow, 82. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Current temp, 62. That's your WAUK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WAUKradio.com.